All right, welcome back. Looking at the cafe orders here, we see he's got this tench order for 13 silver. It's not bad for one fish. No bream orders, unfortunately. I do see these eyed orders, though. Of course, we're very unlikely to get a trophy eyed, but to get this one for 20, that's a possibility. Gibble carp, you never know, that might come together. Same with crucian. Uh, we probably have to go for the crucian. Those are the big ones, and we need seven, but. Ten just got 53 minutes. Ides only got 27 minutes. Sorry, tw yeah, 27 hours, sorry. Um, all right, so let's go get set up at our tent spot. We're gonna try the same two spots, at least a little bit, that we did yesterday. Technically, right now would be a decent time to bream fish, but not for long, so I don't think it's worth going all the way down there. Let's start with tench and we'll go from there. Just before I started recording, I did uh, craft some baits and spend all of our silver again. Which is uh, just what you do if you want to level up your uh, bait making. So I'll show you the progress we've made uh, at this point. So it looks like we're already set up with decent, decent, um, yeah, already clipped and everything. So we're ready to go on the on the tent spot. Let's see if. Wheat seeds are going to work again. What do we have? Wheat seeds, maggots, and wheat seeds, I believe. And when I say wheat seeds, of course you know that I mean wheat grain. So, we got uh, harvesting baits up to 30.4, which means we can now make semolina. So at some point we'll try some semolina. I don't know where, but somewhere. And um, maybe down at the South Bridge. Semolina is just kind of one of those like catches everything kind of places. Uh, sorry, kind of baits. It's gonna be a rainy day at Old Berg, it appears. I think the low end of the tench order was 800 grams, so we really could sneak in a um, smaller end tench to get that silver. Of course, you always want to sell the cheapest one to the cafe order, sorry, the smallest one in the cafe order so that you get the most silver on the other ones. If we, uh, if we do catch multiple tench, I don't know if we will or not. What I haven't done is, I think until we get to, until we get to garlic dough on making bait, which semolina is pretty expensive to make. Um, I did buy a bunch of it, of the of the bags of it, but we we actually have to buy milk, which we've got six more pieces of milk. We don't have any sugar. Sugar is like almost three silver per, and here at Old Berg it might be three silver per. So it's pretty expensive to make, and we have to make a good bit of it. Um, to level up, but until we get to garlic, uh, garlic dough, I'm not going to do any extra ground bait work. Um, once we do get there, then yeah, we'll start leveling ground bait a little more aggressively as well. But... The only thing that would be nice about hitting ground bait is that 15% does give us options of using a few more ingredients to try try some different things for the tench, especially. Really like our our rigs we've got going. So I'm going to be uh, out of town for uh, a little bit of time, a few days. So this this may be the last video. Uh, in this series that I can post until we get back into town, so till like early next week, most likely. This is on maggots. This 
see if we can get ahead of it here. Sometimes we can't. The fish just sort of swims this way so fast. It's hard to get ahead of it. And keep it from going out in the big, the big blue. Maybe we did though. We want to encourage it to go back the other way. To give us a chance to wear it out if it's if it's going to be a fighter. I think we did successfully get ahead of it. Perhaps. This, this could totally be a tinch, too. This isn't necessarily a carp. Depends on how how quickly it gets worn out, though. We've caught so few tinch lately on the maggots that, um, you know, my initial thought is like, oh, it's a grass carp or something. But... Obviously, it's possible to catch tench on maggots. We were in that other spot a lot more than we have here. Wheat grain has, has worked better here. It seems to be coming straight into us, so... We want to, at this point, once you get the fish moving towards you like this, you know, I mean, at least what I do is I'll start shift reeling because you build up that momentum, the speed. Sometimes you even get them belly up. It's... Um, it's hard for them to recover. This is definitely a tinch, by the way. This is awesome. 1.8 tinch. Those suckers are strong initially, but they wear out fast. So that's good. Let's see if we can get a little bit of this comfort back, especially now that it's not now that it's not um, raining anymore. So that tinch does fit the order. And if we don't catch another one, we'll use that for the order because, and we'll look at the price comparison, but that'll be worth more to do the order than it would be just to sell it. But if we catch a smaller tinch than that, then obviously we'll use it for the order. If we can um, get our comfort up though and get some energy back, we might be able to 43.9 on the bottom fishing. We're getting ever closer to 45 where we can use leaders. Not that they're in stock or anything. I forgot to look at winding too. I went to winding to buy all that bait making stuff and I forgot to look for leaders. This is maggots again. We might need to go maggots times two right now. So I think this is another tinch. I don't think it's it's not a grass carp or anything. We don't have to do our whole, like, getting ahead of it. It's just going to come right out, I think. Some of this, it's it's probably not even very big. Some of this is we have no energy. And so I think, you know, that goes into the equation, equation of being able to impact that fish. Let's see if we can lift it above the water here. Get this out pretty quick. I don't know. There we go. Now we got it. Definitely another tinch. Looks like another nice tinch. And. I might switch another line to maggots. Yeah, this is beautiful. This 1.7 tinch, like that's perfect. Let's see what is on these um, 
on the wheat grain. If neither one of these have a tension, then let's switch another one to maggots for now. If the maggots just happen to be working better at this moment, then we will embrace that. Yesterday, maggots weren't catching tension this spot at all, but wheat grain was. So it's kind of changing, but now the gibbles are coming in on the wheat grain. I think both of these rods are getting bites again. It must just be because it's that time of day where a lot of fish activity. If it gets a little warmer in the middle of the day, it'll slow down for sure. It's a gibble, it's a nice one. I think it is. I think we could go to a little bit longer clip if we wanted to try to put one line like more in the right in that green stuff. Maybe go to 18, 19 meters and cast this first line all the way up into that green stuff. This more at an angle instead of straight across. Straight across, I think 18 is still about right. It's a little bleak. I like this bite rate right now, though, on the maggots. This is the wheat grain again. You know, this might be an okay spot to test some Alina if we wanted to do that. To maybe, maybe next fish on the wheat grain if it's something kind of small like that. Maybe we'll throw some Alina and just see what happens. I haven't. I've, I've literally not fished with Semolina in so long. I, I don't even know what the status of Semolina is. There's a nice bleak. I think that's the first like marker. Oh shoot! Hold on. Let's. Let's do this. Um, we're gonna clip up to 19 and we're gonna aim right up in the, ooh, cast a little too far to the left, but that is gonna be about the right distance, I think. Whatever it is, it took off down the river. I'm glad this isn't something big. I just really, oh, 654. I want to catch a tench that's like right in that 800 range that we can uh, turn in for the order. That'd be cool. But some nice tench today. Really nice tench. I think it might be worth making a little more basic ground bait. Maybe we just do like crackers and maggots or even crackers and one of the worms or something. I might go turn in that tench order and buy some ground bait materials just to, just to see. I think the tench would prefer well, I don't know. Sunflower oil is probably good for them, but all right, let's cast it more this direction. Yes, that's where we want it. That's a cool fish. I like that bleak. I just don't see bleak that often. I don't often fish for things that get me bleak. Bleak are used so much in uh, live bait fishing in this game.
Let's see what we've got here. Is this a tinch? I think it is. Yeah, and we nailed, I mean that, oh, 44.1, that's awesome. We really got it in a good spot over there. Yeah, that's great. I think that spot is gonna be really beneficial. It's a roach. That's a nice cast. All right, let's see. We might switch to Semolina. Another roach? No. Actually, it might be a gibble. Really small gibble. All right, let's try Semolina. Do I need to turn that off? Uh, I need to turn off the audio real quick for new messages. First thing you should do when you open the game, turn off the <laughs> audio cue for new messages. Because that gets annoying if you get into a back and forth conversation. All right, let's see what we got in this spot this time. A little kibble maybe? A roach. Nice sleeper. Change this one to 18. Just a little more room to work with. Nice gibble. Yeah. There's a little tinch on the semolina, folks. Wow. Little tinch on the semolina. Okay. So let's keep track of that. I think Simile is going to catch a lot of a lot of things. I would think different species. At least that's what my memory of it is. That um, it kind of you know is sort of similar to bread maybe, but I do think <laughs> at least back in the day I think that it might have occasionally gotten some bigger carp and stuff. So we could get in trouble with it, but it's worth trying just to see see what happens. It's funny because it, since I've been higher level on my main accounts. Um, I haven't really, um, just, I just haven't thought to try Semolina in so long. There may be fish or places where Semolina has been really good for people. I just, I haven't heard about it, haven't tried it. So, but when I was leveling for the first time, um, for whatever reason, I just have a lot of memories of using Semolina. So, kind of fun to try it again. That's a pretty decent sized fish. Is that a roach? No, it's a gibble. We're at 44.3. The bite rate right now in this spot and the percentage of markers is absolutely terrific. And now that we've got semolina on there, if that continues at this rate, that seems to be doing a little better than what the wheat grain was doing right now. So, and that may have to do with the weather or the temperature. I mean, who knows? Wheat grain, I'm sure, will be good again at times. But 
I'm really tempted to move soon, though, and try to go for those eyed orders. Or at least the one eyed order, the reasonable one. Go down to our bream spot. Can always come back here after a little while. I guess we'll wait. Let's wait till maybe closer to 17, 1800. Let's get a little bit more time in here. This is too good to leave too quick. person was asking me um nice gibble so far my impression of semolina is that it's catching nice size fish nothing small so far which is nice but uh, that person was asking about the tent spot and i was telling them it would opposite from yesterday today maggots seem to be working better it's a sleeper isn't it a little small sleeper chance to run into town get a couple things real fast see if we can um, you know maybe we'll go ahead and turn in that tinch order actually I think the tinch order might have had a long time it might have been the eyed order that was a little shorter in time. Yeah, still 44 hours. I hear the bells going off. Only 17 hours left on the eyed order. What about all the gibbles we're catching? None of them have been real big, though, I guess. They're not to that size. Okay. Um, so... Twenty silver worth of gibbles, and let's purchase some um, sugar. And what was the ground bait we were gonna do? I think we we're just gonna get crackers and maybe like a worm or something. Oh, we don't have chopped worm yet. Corn? You know, corn might be interesting for tench. Let's try that. Let's do one, two, three. And let's do... One, two, three. This could be interesting. Everything we just bought was bought on the back of the gibbles <laughs> that we've caught in this spot. Since there weren't any active orders for uh, at least that size gibbles. Well, I think we've got three fish on. Surprised none of them have gotten away yet. Big old gibble. That one might be big enough for that tr that order. It's a little eye, didn't it? No, crucian. I didn't see that right. That's a crucian. 
Well, let's put this one back in just to have something in. And let's make a um, couple or at least one stack of that. Uh, pinch alternate. And we're going to go with crackers, corn, and sunflower oil. I think this should work. I don't think it'll hurt, at least. Let's make two stacks of it. We've got enough to make three, but let's just make two for right now. Now, let's try it out. See, we got a 10 out of 10 quality and a 2 out of 10 quality. We'll do the 2 out of 10 for right now. We don't have long until we'll probably move down to Bream for a little bit and try to catch that um, Eyed Order as well. Using our Wheat Grain, that Boily. And then we'll probably also have some pearl barley in the water. Just to see how the bream are looking. Alright, so let's see if the tench like this new ground bait. Probably a lot of things will like it, but... I think that's a pretty good ground bait. It's got the sunflower oil. It's got corn in it. And it's made with a cracker base, so I just think that'll be pretty good. Emelina's about to get something. All right, at least we can dig a little bit now that our comfort level's up and our energy. 30.5. And this could have changed, but back in the day for me, it was really around 35%, I think. Um, Apparently right now the cheese cubes are only catching um, grass carp in this spot, which of course we don't have access to cheese cubes yet, but um, there are times that cheese is just killer for tench, but I don't think right now, it doesn't seem like that's really the case. Cottage cheese might be working better than the cheese cubes for tench right now. Well, so much for only big fish getting on with semolina. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move here shortly. We'll give it just a little bit longer. It is unfortunate because I think the same time that we sort of want to be down there trying to catch the eyed is also the time that the tench might come back through here might get a couple more decent tench but
let's get this set up. We want green variant. And we'll put um, pearl barley on this one. This already has the right ground bait on it. Let's check out Semolina. I wonder if Semolina works at all for Bream. It does mention Bream. So let's try Semolina for Bream. Instead of the boilies for now. Um, well, maybe early we want the boilies because the boilies can catch the eyed. And on this one, we definitely want... Hold on, I'm having a brain... What were we catching the eye on? Wheat seeds. And ground bait wise, we want the green berry for the eyed. Eyed and bream seem to pretty much share similar tastes on ground bait. Sometimes ground, eyed ground bait works better for getting trophy bream. Sometimes bream ground bait works for getting the eyed so pretty similar okay let's clip back down to 17 let's see if we can't get this eyed order I think we had I'd come in like maybe two out of the first three fish on the wheat grain yesterday and it was early it was around this time and we will try this no 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 we're gonna start off with um, red worm tin but we will switch to Semolina eventually, I think. Especially if we can get even just one eyed for that order. I don't remember the exact weight of the order, but if we can uh, get one that looks like it might work, then we'll we'll start switching stuff around. I would definitely want to try Semolina in this spot. First fish on pearl barley this early, it's probably going to be undersized. But you never know. Oops. First fish on the wheat grain. Well, it's too small to be a eyed order for sure. It is an eyed though. So at least the eyed are still seem to be okay with the wheat grain. Maybe we can get one and then we'll switch to full on bream as it gets a little later. So if it works out timing wise, we could put this on wheat grain. I mean, sorry, change the wheat grain to semolina and then keep this on boilies. And if semolina doesn't work, we'll go pearl barley times two and uh, red worm boilies times one. I think that's probably the best way to attack this bream spot with since we don't have garlic dough yet. But it's not going to be too long till we're at garlic dough. I mean, I think by the time I get back from our little family vacation and start making videos again, we should be able to be at garlic dough by then. Since we're already in the semolina range.
All right, boilies. First fish on the boilies. Undersized bream. Had several small bream on pearl barley so far. I think three. This is uh, number three. Failing a lot with the digging. Boilies again. Again, a little bigger than the pearl barley, but still, well, this might barely be a marker. I don't think so, though. No. Nope. The wheat grain has not been very active. We need to catch one of those eyes quick or I'm gonna give up on wheat grain. Get something catching a little higher percentage of fish. I'm excited to try semolina. Now it's still early. I mean, even if we were using garlic dough, it's possible that at this time, a lot of the bream might be under underwhelming. All right, please be an eyed. Is that a chub? All right, we'll try it one more time. That was an 800 gram chub. Alright, we can no longer say it's early. The marker bream are going to show up. There's the first one. You would sort of expect it to be now. And maybe we'll wait till 22.30. And then we're changing wheat, wheat grain. Got our first marker on the boilies. Looks like we have another sub marker on the, oh, it's a chub, the pearl barley. All right, if big Bama fans fishing here, you know I'm doing something right. Big Bama fan pull in a trophy. Level 31.
I think Big Bama Fan is the first one that I ever heard about using those uh, red worm boilies on, on bream at Wolkov. I think that's the only reason why I even knew to try those here. All right. Yeah, it's probably too small, even if it is an eye. Okay, let's just try Semolina for a minute. No idea if Semolina is going to work on Bream or not, but it lists it in the, in the bait description, so I want to at least try it. Pearl Barley. Nice. This might be a marker. Yeah. Okay, so Pearl Barley's even catching markers. I don't know how long I'll wait on Semolina. It might be worth having two Pearl Barleys out there. We could still get lucky and catch our eye on the Red Worm. It is possible. We caught one eyed, right? Wasn't that in this location? Oh, there it is. Yeah, one of the first fish we caught over here. Hmm. Pearl barley, pearl barley. At least get, at least get some chances at some fish. guess we just give it to midnight on Semolina. I mean, you never know when it's going to be one of those situations where maybe the bite rate's not great, but maybe it attracts the bigger bream. But I'm sure I'm not the first to test it, so I probably would have heard about it if that was the case. All right. All right. Go, boilies, go. Life Bream. I like it. We're getting some markers now. All right. Still nothing on the Semolina.
Trying to wait till 12.30. Boilies again. Maybe we should go two times boilies, not two times pearl barley. We're just getting low on boilies, so... Another good one though. Alright. Semolina, not for us at this point right now. It's not working. So, let's double up on the boilies for now. I think there's some evidence that the boilies are working a little more consistently than pearl barley. A little slower bite rate, but... A little nicer bream. Ugh. I hate to see that. Quality, two out of ten. Ouch. This spot's slowing down a little bit. Let's see if anything has changed on the weeklies. This will give us something to do while we're waiting on these fish to bite. All garlic dough. And today, yesterday, day before yesterday. There's the pea porridge at Volkov and the bark beetle at Volkov. It's gonna be all garlic dough. Oh, wait, what? That's weird. We can now use a leader. I just, if they're all sold out here, 
I don't know that I think they'll be available at any of the other lakes. I guess we could try um, Balaya. You never know. Might be there. I think the, um, the boily bite rate might just be a little slow. We'll see what the next fish we catch is on one of the boilies and maybe think about switching one of them to pearl barley. Now this could just be, you know, this could be a lot of factors. This could be the, how much it's raining, the weather, the temperature, uh, overcast, who knows, but it feels like this spot is just a little slower right now than it has been the last couple times I've been here. Hold on, let's see what we get on this one before we... Common carp. So common carp is very possible on these boilies then. That looks more like a bream. That's a good one. I think I have to go with it again. All right, let's see what's on the pearl barley. That's also a good one. Like a real good one. A really good one and that was on pearl barley so big Bama fan just called a nice eyed okay so let's go pearl barley
Interesting. Really small fish on these boilies. Everything's popping off a lot better now. We've gotten through those dead hours in the very middle of the night. Back onto the other side here and doing a little better. We got some pretty decent bream this session. Not a lot, but I'm, I'm pleased with it. Two point three, two point oh, one point oh, two point oh, some other little markers. It's not bad. Now, there we go. That shows more promise. Hopefully, it's not another common. Green to me. Nice. I don't know if you've seen how much our XP bar has gone up. Also be worth some decent silver. But when you can get into the close to those two kilo bream pretty nice I'm almost at the point where I'd be willing to go three across with these boilies. Be a little slow, but the percentage of decent bream on there seems to be solid right now. Saw that weekly record on the Vimba. Curious how many of those are coming out at Volkov right now. Night crawlers. That's cool. That's all recent. Wonder where the spot is. Wonder if they would uh share their location if I send them a message. I 
Let's see. I love fishing at Volkov. If there's a decent spot for Vimba, there's probably some other bream species there as well. But when people are catching those on night crawlers, you never know. They may not be going for the Vimba. They may be going for other things on night crawlers and happening to get the Vimba. So it just depends. You catch some big stuff on night crawlers at Volkov, so according to how active the catfish are, and so I don't know. But they may bite on red worm as well. The middle of the islands with worms. That's not very specific. But I won't push it. Not everybody is comfortable sharing their coordinates. Which is their choice. But let's pull up Volkov real quick and just take a look and see what they... Oh, wait, maybe they changed their mind. Let's see. So they're probably off of... Actually, it could be from here. And they're casting more shallow. And that's good, because they avoid the catfish. That might be fun to try when I stream fishing later tonight. Maybe we can get over there on either my main or alternate account and test out some Vimba fishing. All right, 734. So we don't want to stay here much longer. came out yeah, I think we go ahead and start packing it up actually I probably shouldn't have put that last one back in um, well we'll give it another half an hour in game we might can get one more marker Got I had doubled up on pearl barley. That's right. Okay, that's a pretty good bream. Um, I'm gonna put it back in there just because if we get a nice one on this boily, I might put the boily back in one more time. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe because the rain, a little colder temp, go a little longer on bream. So, anyway, I'm thinking middle of the islands. That could be this beach here, right? 
I mean, that's definitely a thing. But when they said keep it shallow two meters, I'm thinking they're casting into this sort of first lip of this big hole that goes down to eight meters. They're kind of keeping it here. And that might be how they're avoiding catfish. Might get less catfish bites there. Worms, red worms, and obviously night crawlers is where a lot of the biggest ones have come. But it's pretty exciting that there's some things starting to happen at Volkov again. Let's see what the um, when the time was on those Vimbo. Was that all like last day or two? Yeah, over the last two days. And it's t like two of these are the same person, but everyone else is unique. Wow, if you look at US USA, you're seeing a lot more maggots mixed in there. So it looks like the worm species is doing the best right now. I mean, maggots, red worms, night crawlers. I mean, until we catch like a really small one, it kind of feels like this spot is still okay. All right, maybe it's less okay now. Okay, let's get set up for tench, or a little bit more tench fishing. Um, actually, let's go with Semolina on that one. Don't want to wait long now that we have a line out of the water, but. Don't know how long we'll have to wait to get a bite on this at this point. It's definitely, this spot definitely is moved into the smaller fish now. Alright, so we're going to go maggots. Back up to the other location. Which is uh, 5261.
Well, that one popped back hard, didn't it? Okay, we won't stay here much longer, but uh, next time we record, it will be at least possible that we could hit 15. If it runs too fast, we're not gonna get ahead of it. Normally don't want to sprint run while you're holding a fish, but what is worse is if this fish does make it out into that cove. Which I think it has. I have not tried to chase a fish around Old Berg in a long time. Now, a lot of times it will pop off when you do that, but I'd rather pop off than get spooled. Try to keep a little tension. At this point, we're going to go for it. So theoretically, you want to never let it go slack as you're walking it down. And every once in a while, stop, see kind of where you where you are. See if it's gotten any more tired. You might be able to stop the chase. When you are moving, put your friction brake down at least a little bit, so you're not accidentally just snapping your line too much slack now. Sometimes what can happen though when you do have a little bit of slack like that and then you reel really hard, sometimes the fish, if it happens to be a little bit and it's not fighting you at that moment, you can get that trick where you've got the momentum of the fish coming right back towards you. We don't necessarily need to be doing Kind of reeling right now the objective is just to get it tired dream scenario is this is a really big tinch and that's why you chase it if i could say for a hundred percent certainty it was a grass carp probably would just alt f4 and save myself some time because it's not going to be a big enough grass to actually be worth it money or experience wise but and also, like, we don't know what's going on with our other lines at this time. We could have something really big on one of those. Bad things could be happening, but... Since Tinch have been biting the maggots, I think it's worth at least seeing if we can... ...figure out what this is.
Now this has really extended the length of this video. If we had any energy at all, we might actually be able to have already done more with this. So when you feel like you can comfortably start affording to always have some tea slash coffee and even some of the alcohol or whatever to fight the comfort level, it's worth doing that. Now we're at a little bit of a danger zone here. He's going to He's going to make this corner faster than we can because of where we have to go angle-wise. So this gets a little tricky. I also don't want to burn up the reel. This is the spot where... So you, you can't come into this corner almost spooled because you'll lose him as you're making the, the long angle versus the quick angle that he makes. All right. Now we should be good for a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and get the friction brake back up. We actually might be able to... No. Nah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh boy. I can't believe we haven't lost this fish. With all the mistakes I've made trying to run him down. Yeah, he's just moving. He's a mover. So at this point, if it had been a tinch, it would have probably given it up by now. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure we'll be able to make that corner. It's very possible we get spooled up here if we haven't made some progress by then. I'm wearing him out. The other thing we could try to do is actually get past him. I don't know if he'll let us do that or not, though. Yikes. He must have just swam right towards us. Yeah, we're pretty close to the fish right now, actually. We might be able to get ahead of him. He is right there. I don't know, like, can we lift him? What's better, have him go back the other way? Probably. I think he will at this point. No, don't come this way. Just get tired. Quit, quit tearing up my reel.
that was a little bit of progress. I mean, it, he's getting to the point where maybe fatigue is setting in a little bit. He's not wanting to run as far or as fast. That nice big bend, let the pole do some work. Because the reel's not get cutting it. might be able to keep him from making that turn again. I don't know. If it looks like he is going to make the turn again, we need to start moving soon, though, because he's getting farther and farther away from us. I think he just swam towards us there is why it went down like that. We will take it while we can. He might have... He might be upside down or something right now. Oh, he's fighting it. Come on. Just keep coming. I gotta get closer to the water if we're actually gonna be able to pull him in right now. I don't want to. I don't want to break the momentum because he'll take off. He is really close to the land, isn't he? See if we can walk him down. I have no idea where he is. I don't think he's close enough to do this, but just in case. Oh, he was. Okay, that was worth it. All right, so 6.6 .6 kilo. The good news is it wasn't a grass, it was a black, which is more rare. So over 10,000 experience. It's crazy, you get 3,500 more experience by letting me go, but it, we, experience isn't what we need right now, it's silver, so we definitely keep him. It's a nice fish. That's what can happen though, <laughs> with, the, with that spot. It may actually be faster. Yeah, we'll go this way. Wow, well, I'm glad we did that. That was a pain, but um, I'm glad we did it. It's been a long, long time since I've actually chased a fish like that here. That brought back some memories. That was fun. We set a lot of personal records on this account on that one fish. And we hit 15. That was kind of crazy. So much for hitting 15 next episode, I guess. couldn't see it I just knew it was fairly close to the bank and so if it was possible to get the net underneath him before he swam away from me again that's what we wanted to do so 
There's still a fish on one of these lines. It's lucky it's not broken. Holy cow, we had it at 25 too. Totally could have gotten snapped. Is that a tench? That'd be kind of fun. Just a tench sitting here waiting on us. Nice. Oh, and that's a perfect size for that order. All right, let's see if there's still bait on this. There is. There is still a fish. And this is Paternoster. This isn't even Loop Rig. Loop Rig is known for keeping those fish on for a long time, even if you're fighting other fish. A little crucian. But, um, yeah, those fish waited for me. It's pretty nice. Especially that tench. I think we'll be able to hit that tench order and save our other tench for the cell. I don't even want to see the damage that did to the Lacerti. Alright. The one-eyed order is gone now. But we didn't have it anyway. Oh, three bream but <laughs> none of our bream are that big. But if you're using garlic dough, that's a great bream order. 60 silver and you only need three. It's almost worth jumping on another account to do, but I probably won't do that. All right, so the 945 gets us 13 silver for one fish. And we never got any of the crucians in the right size range. Okay, nothing else. So let's see how we did. First of all, let's we'll see how much that uh, black carp's worth. 19 silver by itself. But look at these tench, you know? It's for how much work and damage that black carp did. That's why these tench are so good. And the bream. I mean, that's just a lot of silver per fish for fish that aren't that hard to catch. So 117 silver plus the order. This has been a really good session. That was our new most expensive fish, of course, but a really good session so we will be able to use that silver to if nothing else push us over hopefully pretty close if not to the point where we can get garlic dough and I may do the bait crafting off video we'll see we'll see how it goes um, but as always thanks for watching that was exciting I'm glad we were able to do that and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you again. If I don't make another video tonight, then the next one will be a few days, but uh, we will get back to them once I'm back into town. Thank you so much.